All right, so what is it exactly we're getting into? We're going to have to ride down the road and find out. Let's dive into it, shall we? All right, guys. Welcome back as we are riding down the road on the Sportster known as Copper. I don't know what the last bike is I rode in a video. It could have been Blue Moon. It could have been Copper. Uh, I have no idea. If you're new here, welcome in. My name is T-Bone. I shoot motorcycle related content and well, any kind of content really. If you are new here, I would like for you to watch some of my videos and make sure that I'm right for you. Make sure I am what you're looking for. Because on my channel, outside of loving movies and riding motorcycles, and uh, we don't particularly pick just any kind of motorcycle to ride. We love all bikes here. But watch some of my videos to make sure I'm right for you because I'm not deluded enough to believe that I am right for everyone. If you are old here, welcome back. You know what's going on. So, uh, man, it seems like there's been a lot going on the last couple of weeks, guys. Uh, I did last week, I shot the video, uh, I believe that was the video I shot where I went and kind of visited the place that had brought me so many great memories. Got a lot of good feedback from you guys who hung out and watched that video with us. Uh, in the live chat over on YouTube, but that's kind of something here too guys <coughs> I want to suggest is uh, I premiere my videos usually Monday nights at 730 uh, There's a couple other creators that uh, sometimes will upload on Mondays uh, I know Rainy Ryder uploads a lot of videos on Mondays <coughs> But for the most part The people that I'm subscribed to, I'm sure there's a lot of people who upload on Mondays or premiere on Mondays, but the people that I'm subscribed to, Mondays is usually left alone and I've usually got that 7.30 market to myself. So I say that to say, come and join us in our, uh, the premiere chats. Uh, great people usually the recycle hooligans in there scott freeze in there rainy riders been coming in the last couple of weeks uh and we just have a good time old flip and the blue mules in there i gotta get with flip flip just lives literally 25 30 minutes up the road for me and i've been wanting to meet with the guy since he moved to murphy north carolina from tampa florida but y'all know my schedule and things that have been going on, but I'll get to it. I'll message him one day out of the blue, out of the clear blue nowhere, and I'll say, hey, Flip, you want to meet up somewhere? And he'll probably say, no, you absolute goober. I do not know who you are, and no, I do not wish to meet up with you. <laughs> but if he does, he does. I'm still a fan. Uh, so today's video, guys, is going to kind of be a little bit all over the place. But the first thing I've got to do is I've got to get Copper Boy here into town and get some petrol in him, some gasoline, some liquid gold, if you will. So let me take care of that, and I'll get back to you guys in just a minute. All right, guys, sorry about that. I had to get a little gasoline. Uh, man, this has been a busy week, guys. I'll tell you, coming off the end of everything last week uh, at work, our park got flooded out. So I spent uh, four days trying to clean up and repair what got damaged in our park. Uh, apparently Wednesday night into Thursday. We had some really heavy rain to come through our area and 
apparently it got over on that end of the county and it just sat there four to five inches of rain and that caused trouble as everybody else is out riding today too uh, our area is kind of special here guys and that I can remember when there wasn't but just a few of us out here who would ride our bikes but uh the times they are a changing i guess and i'm glad to see more people on motorcycles because i got recognized just a minute ago when i was in town not being some big you know content creator uh somebody just saw my motorcycle and waved me on through to keep from running me over so that was pretty cool <laughs> uh I have been recognized as a car tent creator a couple of times, and that's always cool, but it's awkward at the same time. And, you know, you don't know what to say. Oh yeah, thank you for watching my videos, of course, but I uh, don't know what else to say. <laughs> So today we're going to go out and visit a place that uh, has been in our area for a lot of years. It's been a couple of different things. But uh, I'll introduce you guys to it when we get there. And I will see y'all when we get there. <laughs> Alright guys, so we'll move on to plan B. And when you're flying by the seat of your pants, nothing sounds more official than Plan B. <laughs> plan A fell, let's go to Plan B. So uh, what I want to talk to you guys about today is, like I said, we're coming up on Halloween. And we're going to be coming up on the episodes of uh, Rolling with T-Bone Presents, Shocktober. And, uh, of course, I'll be reviewing some of my favorite horror movies during that time. Uh, if you're not a horror movie fan, I totally understand. So if you don't watch the videos, I totally understand. But I want to do a little precursor, kind of like I did last week with the uh, My Time is Freddy Krueger video. Is I want to talk to you guys about a movie that uh, I actually do not consider to be a horror movie. And that is not, it's not actually even a movie. It's a TV series that originally showed up in our world in 1994. Uh, the uh, adaptation of Stephen King's book, The Stand. Uh, if you'll scroll down, you'll actually see where I've referenced The Stand in a couple of my past videos, mainly because I loved the, the, the 90s, 1990s miniseries so much thought it was a great story and you won't often hear me say this but I have in fact read the entire book of Stephen King's The Stand and it's a big book with a lot of words in it but where the miniseries in 94 kind of left off some of the backstory to some of the characters that we grew to love the book give us good clear backstories uh, and I will say this if you're going to watch the mini series and you do like to read my suggestion and like I said you won't often hear me say this my suggestion would be to watch that mini series and then read the book because you'll be more familiar with the characters if you do it that way uh, but I guess why I'm bringing that up today is uh, on YouTube I've been watching uh, a channel called Heavy Spoilers. And he broke down, of course, what has happened in 2020. Uh, ABC, was it NBC, ABC? One of the television companies remade Stephen King's The Stand with Stephen King at the helm having a lot of credit control basically telling his story now I will make a confession to you guys right now I have not watched the remake of The Stand 
but I watched each episode as heavy spoilers broke it down and I gotta say guys I'm kind of glad I haven't watched the stand but my morbid curiosity is out there so if I ran across it somewhere where I didn't have to pay to see it or if it showed up on one of the streaming services that I already have I might watch it <coughs> but the bits and pieces of it that I have looked at to kind of talk to you guys about this video, uh, it didn't seem like that that there were bad actors in the in the remake series. It just kind of seemed like that they were uh, handed compressed stories and compressed time and. They did the best with what they had to work at. But, <coughs> if you have watched the original 1994 series, then you know, and yes, I am going from uh, almost pavement to gravel. We are riding on a gravel road. Again, I'll make this disclaimer as I do in all my off-road videos. Don't go do this with your street bike unless you just are willing to take the consequences of it upon yourself. Uh, I do ride my street bikes on gravel from time to time. It's just what I do. But anyway, back to what I was saying about this. They were put into a very undesirable situation with the remake of The Stand because they were going in going after characters that had already became super iconic. Uh, meaning Corin Nemec was in it. He played, uh, you know, Harold Lauder, you had Gary Sinise in it, who played Stu Redman, you had uh, uh, Ruby D, who played Mother Abigail, and I'm sorry, Whoopi Goldberg is no Ruby D. <laughs> Nothing against Whoopi Goldberg or anybody else, but Ruby D made the character of Mother Abigail her character, and Whoopi Goldberg was a far cry from Ruby D. I, I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm not trying to offend, you know, Oprah Winfrey or her fans, but she's no Ruby D. But again, it was the situation that they were put in. They were put in a situation where they were attacking this iconic series. And Stephen King's The, the Stand book is an iconic book. The story is iconic as in it is relatable. Look what we're just coming off the hills of that happened in 2020 with COVID-19. So the story that, uh, you know, a communicable uh, or a disease could escape that has a communicability of 99% is not a far cry. <coughs> and even back in 1994, we understood that when we watched the original miniseries was that this is actually something that even if you rooted it in history, does have the offhand chance of happening. And that being that, yeah, a disease could escape some facility somewhere, and yeah, it could potentially kill a whole bunch of humanity. Uh, COVID did that. Uh, we've seen it happen in, throughout history with the Black Plague and just other stuff that I've touched on in other videos. So when you do finish watching this, scroll down and watch some of my other videos. Uh, you'll actually see me ride this road on uh, another one of my street bikes. But uh, I think, like I said, it was uh, other than just those guys and gals were put into a undesirable situation with trying to remake such an iconic TV series as The Stand. Attacking those characters that had already been I mean, you, when you look at the time difference between 2020 and 1994, those characters were a far cry from the cast that was in 1994. I mean, you had Molly Ringwald in it. You had Rob Lowe in it. Uh, again, Ruby D, Cora Nemec, uh, Gary Sinise. I mean, you had state-of-the-art actors and actresses and there was big name actors and actresses in the original stand series that only did short stints they might have only been in maybe one or two scenes but they were still there for the project so 
the remake looked like, uh, I, like I said, a far cry from the original 1994 uh, you know, miniseries. But the acting didn't look bad. It, it really didn't. And I'm not attacking the actors in this remake. Again, they were just given a very tall task to try to fill. That's like someone coming along and saying, you know, just think of your favorite movie, insert your favorite movie here, and then think of somebody trying to remake it. Would you really want to see it? Uh, Black Nightmare on M Street. Again, they remade it in 2010. It flopped because you had iconic people playing iconic characters. So that's kind of going to be the theme of that. Uh, the characters that stand out the most to me in the original 1994 miniseries of The Stand is Ruby D as Mother Abigail and Jamie Sheridan who played Randall Flagg. Now, of course, if you're not familiar with the work, the character Randall Flagg is the bad guy. <coughs> And he is played by none other than Jamie Sheridan. And guys, I'm gonna be honest with you, in the 90s, when Jamie Sheridan caught the role of Randall Flagg, he brought just a certain amount of, it wasn't just bad evil, which is, you know, ultimately what Randall Flagg is, is evil personified. But he brought such a creepy, menacing kind of aura to the character. And yeah, that, that made it a lot more a lot more believable that he was the bad guy. There wasn't no doubt. Man, maybe he's a maybe he's just a good guy who's getting labeled as a bad guy. No, he was the bad guy. <laughs> but again, uh, I just wanted to kind of bring that up as a precursor to what you know we're about to go into with the uh, new series that I'll be coming up with, Shocktober. I already have several of the movies picked for that. I'm still taking suggestions down in the comments. If you uh, if you want to uh, be a part of that, if you have made it this far into the video, please drop down. If you're on Facebook, hit the uh, like button. That'll let me know that you made it to this point of the video, and I'll kind of know where I'm at. Uh, YouTube, do the same. If a bunch of likes show up all at once, I'll know what part of the video you're at. If that makes sense. <laughs> but anyway, guys, like I said, that's kind of a, the plan B. Plan A, I was going to feature a uh, business that had opened up. But I rode out there and they were just completely covered up. They were having a party going on. And uh, no time really for filming or talking. And I understood, hey, you got to make your hay while the sun's shining. And uh, I would never try to infringe on anybody making their living. But yeah, guys, uh, that's kind of just what's been going on with me, like I said, since last week. Since my birthday week weekend. Turned out really a nice weekend, and then I got dumped on when I got back to work with the flooding. <laughs> Man, it was bad. But that's part of what's like working in Mother Nature. When you're outside, you gotta you gotta sometimes just swing with the punches and Mother Nature is undefeated. Uh, when she decides to show up and show out, she does exactly that. And I also want to say real quick, I'm sending we're sending uh, the entire Roland with T-Bone family are sending good thoughts and prayers to the people of Florida who were affected by uh, uh, the hurricane that came through a few days ago. Uh, I can't remember. I don't want to get the name of the hurricane wrong. But anyway, uh, actually, Shea Tree Surgeon has a video on his channel where he kind of rode his bike around uh, after the storm was over, <coughs> kind of giving a live, you know, depiction of what was going on and how it had affected their area there in Tampa. So it's a, it's a little, uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's a good watch. I, I go give it a shot. Drop down, comment, tell Shade Tree Surgeon that Rolling with T-Bone sent you over there to watch it. Uh, 
But yeah, we're getting to that time of the year now to where uh, the pressure systems from the north and uh, the pressure systems coming up out of the Gulf of Mexico are going to be butting heads. And, a lot, and sadly, Florida and Georgia, North Carolina, Alabama, we all kind of get left with the, uh, you know, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Texas, part, certain parts of, of uh, East Texas. We all sort of get uh, left with the fallout from the battle. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, guys, that's kind of it. I'll be honest with you, not going to be a long video today, but get a chance to go stick out, check out the stand and get ready for uh, what's coming with the Rolling with T-Bone Series Presents Shocktober. So, guys, I'm going to drop it off right here. Y'all pick it up. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. Do all that on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. That helps me get into the algorithm so more people can see my videos. But uh, tell you what, guys, until the next time, I'm T-Bone. This has been Rolling with T-Bone. Y'all take care of yourselves. Take care of each other.